Hey everyone, today I thought I'd take a look at some other strange and unusual things in my collection. Last time I talked about video game vinyl and CDs and tapes, and I'll do more videos about video game music in the future. I have a lot of it. But today I want to talk about something a little bit different today, but still nerdy. Let's talk about Star Wars. I have a lot of Star Wars vinyl. I had a lot in America when I moved here to Japan. I live in Japan now. I sold most of it, but in the time I've been here, I've accumulated even more and a lot of them are a little strange and weird. I don't think I have the best or biggest collection of Star Wars vinyl on the planet, but I think I might have one of the weirdest. And I wanna start out with what is probably the absolute worst, absolute worst Star Wars related record you could find. This is the Kid Stuff Repertory Company's album Star Wars, released in 1978. Now you look at this, and it looks, you know, kind of cheap, right? But you think, oh, this is a Star Wars album. It has Star Wars right there, and there's robots that look vaguely like C-3PO and R2-D2. But this really has almost nothing to do with Star Wars. So when it opens, it does play a, quite frankly, very bad version of the Star Wars theme on Synthesizer. But then it just stops being a Star Wars album, and it becomes a storytelling record, a sci-fi retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk, where Jack gets a spaceship and he escapes his planet. He hates his planet because his planet's too noisy. And then he goes to a quiet planet and there's a monster in space that wants a toothbrush. It's, it's really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. Whew, it's bad. But it's bad. But it's weird and... Mm. I don't know why I have this still, because I bought this in America, I think, and I came back here and I put it on and I'm like, I hate my life. But it's, it's, it's kind of a badge of honor now. This is the worst record I own, I think, and I own a lot of bad records. This is just complete garbage. Some of the other records that are strange and unusual, you can find on YouTube. This one you cannot find on YouTube. I am not putting it on YouTube. I might play a little bit of the theme under, but I don't know who owns the copyright to this. I don't want to get in trouble again on YouTube for copyright. If I'm gonna get another copyright strike, I do not want it to be for the Star Wars Kid Stuff record. No way. Moving on to Japan. As I said, I live in Japan. I've been here about eight years, and there are a lot of kind of unique Star Wars albums that are kind of special to Japan. And in my opinion, you don't get much more Japanese than a Star Wars theme by The Ventures. Let me explain. So The Ventures are an American instrumental rock band. You've heard their music, trust me. They were absolutely freaking huge in Japan. I, I'm, they're still pretty popular here. They're still going, actually. There's, there's one guy left. I, I, you go, dude. Um, this is a cover of the Star Wars theme. This came out in 1978 because, of course, it did. The A side is called the Star Wars theme, but it actually is kind of a medley, and it has the main theme, the Imperial March, the cantina music, of course, and a lot of other good stuff on it. It's a really good mix, very disco. I enjoy it. The B side is a cover of the theme to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Now, that doesn't lend itself as well to disco interpretation, but it's still a fun cover. Another Japanese-only release that I've come upon since I moved here is this. Now, this is the story of Star Wars. Now, if you're a Star Wars fanatic, you might know the story of Star Wars. This was an album that came out not too soon after the movie, I think in 78, that is like an abridged version of the movie with original narration and clips from the movie put into it. Now, what makes the Japanese version different is two things. One, the dope cover which is based on the original Japanese poster. We'll see more of this soon. And this is a Japanese version of the story of Star Wars. So it has original Japanese narration and audio. The dub on this is not the same as the dub that's in the movie. So it has different uh, voice actors doing the roles. I'm not a huge voice actor person, but there are some pretty big names in here. The narration is by Hirokawa Taichiro, who did some stuff on Yamato and Sherlock Hound. Um, Luke is played by Kamiya Akira, who is Kenshiro in Fist of the North Star, and is uh, Kogoro in Co Detective Conan. Han Solo is Hazama Michio, who is the voice of Count Doku in the Clone Wars Japanese dub. And Obi-Wan is played by Nayagoro, and Nayagoro is the voice of Zenigata in the original Lupin. So some pretty big names for a record like this. It's also a cool record. It has a great um, poster inside. The original version came with like a do-it-yourself cardboard model of R2-D2. 
you cannot find that version now. Like, like that, that model is used. Every kid who bought this record in 1978 made that model. I, I imagine if there's a copy that has that cardboard model unused, it probably goes for close to $100. But it's a fun record. Again, I can't speak Japanese that well, but, you know, I know what they're saying because, yo, it's, 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 it's Star Wars. Another Japanese-only release is this very interesting one, one of my favorites. Probably of this, this is my favorite. This is Osamu Soji's Star Wars. Now, Osamu Soji was a Japanese composer who primarily worked with synthesizers. He did a few, he did a lot of anime scores. He has a few original albums I really like, and he did a lot of, like, synthesized interpretations of music from anime under the name Digital Trip. Those albums are fantastic. I'm probably going to do a whole series on that one day. But this is his version of Star Wars, and the A side is all Star Wars music. You got the main theme, the Imperial March, the Cantina Band, you know, the stuff you want. The B side is some original music that is also very good. I would compare this to, like, Patrick Gleason's Star Wars or the Miko Star Wars stuff, but to be honest, it's much, much, much better. Osamu Soji was a madman, and the way he used th synthesizers, I believe, is still quite unique. And he uses sounds and effects and beats that I just haven't heard in a lot of other records and a lot of other, like, synthesizer albums, like those Wendy Carlos ones and stuff like that. This album's rad, great cover, awesome, everything about it's fantastic. You can find this on YouTube if you type in Osamu Soji Star Wars. Someone's put it up. Uh, not me. YouTube is not, I didn't do it, YouTube. Don't stop, please, no. One more Japanese-only release from the original Star Wars era. Not a record, though. This is a tape. This is the Star Wars trailer sound tape. Now, I first saw this in a record store out here in Japan for like 6,000 yen, which is 60 bucks. And I was, I had no idea what it was, and I wasn't going to buy a tape for 60 bucks. But eventually, it kept going down and down and down in price. It went down to 2,000 yen, about 20 bucks. I snagged it. Didn't even know what it was. Went home, put it in my tape deck, hit play. And what is it? It is nothing but the audio from the Return of the Jedi trailer and nothing else. So if you're wondering how the hell did that happen, apparently this was a fan club release in Japan only. And I don't know how many were made, not that many. I've never seen another one. Whenever I try to research it online, there's one Japanese website that has some information on it. And every other picture I've seen of it on the internet, I've taken. <laughs> so it must be pretty obscure. There's not much in it, just a little sleeve with some text from the trailer. Pretty well done, you know, they managed to spell Lando Calrissian's name right, and Chewbacca, Luke Skywalker, however, they did spell Alien as Aryan. Look, man, L's and R's are hard. I'm not, I'm not gonna fault them for it. I do also think this is the most bare-ass bare looking tape I've ever seen in my entire life. When I first saw the tape itself, I thought it was a bootleg, but it's just very basic. Again, if you want to hear that, it's just the trailer just Return of the Jedi. There's nothing special. I'm not, I'm not playing it. I'm not putting it over the audio on this to get a copyright strike. I'm sorry. Now, skipping way ahead to 2017 and skipping across the world back to America, I have some interesting albums that came out when the sequels came out. A label called I Am Shark released some variants for The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. They released four different covers for The Force Awakens and two for The Last Jedi. I managed to get all of them. Each of them also have unique colors, which on some of them are kind of drab and not that great. Like there's one that's just kind of like some dark spots on a dark cover and others are just kind of a plain blue, but others are really gorgeous. There's this one that is half green and half transparent green. And oh, that's an amazing looking colorway. I, I, I don't have any other records that look this good. Now, while I think all these records look good, and the covers are fantastic, these covers are by a guy named Dan Mumford, and he is an artist who works primarily, I think, doing, like, posters and things for companies like Marvel and Hasbro. I know he, he did some art for a uh, G.I. Joe toy, things like that, and he does concert posters. I went to his website. There was a very good concert poster for Pearl Jam there. Like, really just great. Just beautiful, amazing covers. But while the covers are beautiful and while the records look really good for the most part, 
these don't sound very good. And that's a big bummer. They're very noisy. Um, a lot of cracks and pops. And, and I've cleaned them. I have a record cleaner. I cleaned them several times. I cannot get any of them to sound great. Now, none of them sound terrible. They're not unlistenable garbage or anything like that. But they're just not that good. And the scores to Force Awakens and Last Jedi are pretty quiet. So any quiet record, any kind of surface noise or scratches or pops is going to soar up as clear as day. Now, I don't know why these records sound so bad. A lot of people say that, oh no, it's because they use these colors and stuff. Now, not, you know, I have a lot of colored vinyl and they sound fine. I just think someone made a mistake somewhere. Who knows? I don't know. I don't want to make... I don't want to say something and have it not be true. I have no idea why they sound so bad. In addition to sounding bad, <laughs> there was also kind of a huge problem in getting these. So the Force Awakened ones, they came out no problem, as far as I can tell. I got mine pretty soon after ordering them. The last Jedi ones were a nightmare. I ordered those in 2018. I did not get them until the end of 2019. I know a lot of other people just straight up, just, they just didn't get theirs. I think even still. And I Am Shark has been very bad at communicating the problems here. No one really knows what happened. I know that when I finally got mine, I got two sleeves for each of them. And one sleeve had, like, they said a misprint, when all it really was was some of the text was a little too dark. And if they delayed them this long simply because the text was too dark, I don't know what they were thinking. It doesn't look that bad. But... It was a huge nightmare. I Am Shark put all their social media on lockdown. I think it's still on lockdown. I don't know if they're still active. I've heard they are. Um, I don't want to say anything too inflammatory, but I would say that, you know, maybe don't buy anything from I Am Shark. Um, I, I, I can't trust them as a company. It's a shame because, like I said, even though these records don't sound all that great, they're absolutely gorgeous, and I love the artwork. I don't regret buying them. And also, they're also worth a fortune now. So, score. But I don't want to end on a down note. So let's talk about something a bit more positive. Here in Japan, the soundtracks to the original trilogy were just re-released on vinyl. And they have really cool, in my opinion, really cool, unique covers that are exclusive to Japan. This is the Star Wars one, which is nice. This is based on the original Japanese poster. All of these are based on the original Japanese posters, like this crazy one for <laughs> Empire. I love this cover. It's very strange. It's like a photo collage. It's it's very 80s. It's, it's very Japanese 80s design. I, I dig that quite a bit, and I love it. Also, like I said, also based on the poster. And then there's the Jedi one. This one is one record. These are both two records each. This is just one record, and this is the one for Jedi. I also love this cover, and the back has that awesome cover that was used for the original Revenge of the Jedi poster. These are great. There's nothing that special about them. They're just the music. There's no inserts. There's no gatefold. There's no, you know, bonuses or posters or anything, and that's kind of a bummer because they were, they were kind of expensive. Jedi one is 4,200 yen, which is about 40 bucks, and the other ones were about 60 bucks a pop. So that's pricey. But, you know, they sound great. Unlike the I Am Shark ones, these sound very good, minimal surface noise, you know, very clear and clean. Looks like they did, they did their job. I love everything about these, pretty much. I love the covers, like I said, and I love that they have the Obies. I love a nice Obi strip. I don't like that they put the Walt Disney logo on it. Like, look, Disney, I, I get that you own it. We, we all know you bought Star Wars, okay? Now, but do you have to rub our faces in it? I mean, let me live in the past just a little bit, please. But yeah, I recommend these. You can find them online. Uh, they're on Amazon Japan, and you can order those internationally. So go that route. Don't go on Discogs or eBay. I'm sure you'll pay some crazy inflated prices you don't need to but yeah if you're looking for a new release of the og soundtracks bangers i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit those like and subscribe buttons leave a comment engage in the algorithm you know how it is i gotta say that i think i'm required by youtuber lore i'll have another video like this up soon maybe one about more video game releases or some other strange things in my collection but until then take care